Well, good morning, everybody. I want to welcome you to worship uh, this first Sunday in May. Not a lot of uh, announcements in your bulletin. The big one is, of course, the administrative board is scheduled to meet uh, this Wednesday at 7 o'clock. And so we will plan on that. Um, yesterday was kind of a big meeting that was held at the Summer Center United Methodist Church. And we're kind of in a preliminary process. There's going to be some significant changes that may be coming our way. Uh, nothing's been officially decided yet, but I thought we had a really good meeting yesterday. I thought we had a, a lot of good input from folks and understanding of some potential ways in which our church here and uh, our sister churches may kind of move ourselves into the future in a direction that I think will be just very helpful and beneficial for, really for everyone. And so the district superintendent, Michelle Hargrave, now if you look at your email, those of you who had email, I just forwarded it to her, to you, the email that she sent me. And I'm going to read this. Now I know some of you don't necessarily have email, so I'm just going to kind of read this and share it with you and give you some time to think about it. And if you have questions after church, you can ask me. And like I said, there's nothing officially that's been done, but we got some things that we're thinking about, some possibilities I think that can really be great. And so this is, I'm not sure my phone decides it wants to lock up, <laughs> but hopefully I can pull this up again. And I'm just gonna read this, and this is from our district superintendent, Michelle Hargrave. This morning, the Brownsdale Sergeant, well, oh, okay, this morning, the Brownsdale Sergeant of Zion Churches will announce that our pastor, Bridget and John, will be serving their churches along with ours. The appointment comes as part of a hope for renewal of the Prairie Land Parish, which will include these seven churches, Brownsdale, Dexter, Grand Meadow, Racine, Sergeant Sumner Center, and Wyckoff. Pastor John and Bridget are to be the lead pastors of the parish with other clergy support for organization and preaching as needed. All the churches have expressed openness to the arrangement, though no official votes have yet been taken. Next steps in the process are for all the ad councils to approve their intention to be part of the Prairie Land Parish and to share the clergy team of Pastor John and Bridget. Then the churches will need to have a church conference to approve the next step. There is much excitement and hope as the churches met yesterday to discuss this possibility. We ask for your prayers for all the churches and for the clergy uh, team in this time of hopeful anticipation. So, Can I add something? Yes, please add. Yeah. <laughs> I was at the meeting yesterday. It was quite an adventure, right? That's the purpose of this, really, is, is that, you know, um, and I'll, I'll talk a little bit about this during worship and stuff, but, you know, um, together we're stronger. And, and this is the idea that we come together, we work together, and, uh, you know, everybody is going to be still very independent in a lot of ways, and, and we're all going to be here just supporting each other, so. Um, so, like I say, if you have questions, this is in process. Uh, yesterday there was a couple of tears, but there's a lot of laughter too. And I think, you know, everybody for the most part left feeling pretty good. So, you know, like I say, nothing's been officially decided. This is what we're moving toward. Um, but we're going to, yes, go ahead. Is there a time period? It's going to come quick. Okay. Hopefully. I mean, there's a lot of things to iron out, but if we can get out <coughs> the ground running, we're going to be hoping to be started by July 1st. Yeah, I know. We got a lot to do. We got a lot to do, but I think we can make it happen. And I think that when all is said and done, like I say, everybody is going to hopefully feel really very positive about this process. There's always growing pains with any kind of change. But we can do this, I think, and everybody, 
you know, for the most part, has quite a few fond memories of some of the Prairie Land Parish stuff that you did in the past. And so we're just kind of tweaking that a little bit. And, and so I, I think, you know, this is something that can help our churches, not for just a year or two, but hopefully well into the future. You know, so this isn't something where it's like, well, we're just going to do this for a year or two, and then, you know, we'll have to do something else. Hopefully, this can be more of a longer-term plan that can help the churches into the future and have a more stable opportunity to be viable in our communities. So, okay, like I say, we, we'll have a lot more to talk about, but this at least gives you some initial understanding of kind of how we're heading uh, towards the future and what we're looking at as far as possibilities. Okay. Uh, as you're able, would you please rise and join with me in the call of worship? Once we were not a people, now we are God's people. Once we ate food that did not satisfy, now we are spiritual love for our Lord. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Amen. The opening hymn is 545, The Church is One Foundation.
Yes, Michelle. Let's join in the opening prayer. Merciful God, our refuge and strength, train our hearts on the words of your Son. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. Feed our souls with your spiritual milk and build our lives into spiritual houses that neither famine nor storm can shake the foundation of our faith. In the name of the Master Builder and Living Stone, we pray. Amen. We go to the Lord now in a time of reflection and prayer. Lord, we are thankful uh, to be here today. and We continue to pray for uh, our folks that are out in the field and trying to get their planting done and just pray for the weather to cooperate. And They'll be able to get the, the things done that they need to complete. And we're thankful for the, the good news about Michelle's mom. And we want to pray for Sharon and uh, Kara and others that just need an uplifting in body and spirit. Guide their doctors, caregivers, give wisdom. Uh, we just pray for uh, our nation, for our world, and all the challenging realities that are there. Uh, we pray for our community here at Dexter, finding ways to come together and be the people here in our church that you want and call us to be, truly live for you. Help us now as uh, we pray that prayer that you've taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Okay, I've got something I want to show you. Um, and I think that, uh, you know, we don't have too many of these anymore that people really use very often. You know what this is? Telephone book. Yeah? Yeah, we don't, you know, a lot of people will show that a young person, they probably wouldn't. But, you know, it's kind of a trick that people used to do with telephone books. And, uh, you know, if I told you, you know, come out here and just, uh, you know, rip out a page, that wouldn't be too big a deal. I mean, you might be here a little while, but, you know, take it, Page by page, you can rip them all out. But you ever see that thing where the strong man, you say, okay, you want to take this telephone book and rip it in half? Anybody want to try? No. <laughs> you know? You know, it takes somebody pretty tough to be able to take a telephone book and rip it in half. You know, I mean, it's, it's not any different, but you put all the pages together and you try to rip this. You know, it don't happen. And, you know, we were kind of talking about this, this principle that, you know, together, we're stronger. And I think, you know, as we look towards the future and coming together, that we come together, you know, you can't rip it. We're going to be stronger. And I think that's, that's just a, that's a Christian principle that, that translates into a lot of things. And uh, so let's just pray. Lord, we know that as we come together, uh, you take each, each individually and we come together into our group. We come together as our church. And so often we are stronger together. 
And so we are thankful that you uh, build us up, you encourage us, you strengthen us as we are there for each other and as we offer this prayer in your name. Amen.
The Lord use the offerings we give for the glory of his kingdom. Give him appreciation and joy. This time I encourage you to place your gifts at the plate at the back of the church. And for those that are viewing audience, you can always send your gifts to the United Church in Grand Meadow or here at the Dexter United Methodist Church. be troubled. If you believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house hath many rooms. If we're not so, I have told you that I am going there to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, that you also may be where I am. You know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we don't know where you are going, so how can we know the way? Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life, and no one comes to the Father except through me. If you really know me, you will know my Father as well, and from now on you do know him and have seen him. Philip said, Lord, show us the Father, and that will be enough for us. Jesus answered, Don't you know me, Philip, even after I've been among you for such a long time? Anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Don't you believe that I am the Father and the Father is in me? The words I say to you, I do not speak on my own authority. Rather, it is the Father living in me who does his work. Believe me when I say I am in the Father and the Father is in me. Or at least believe on the evidence of the works themselves. Very truly, I tell you, whoever believes in me will do the works I have been doing. And there will be even greater things than these because I am going to the Father. And I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. You may ask me for anything in my name, and I will do it. May God bless the reading of the word. The ultimate Green Bay Packer fan died and went to heaven. 
And uh, he was up there and St. Peter was showing him around and he said, okay, this is where you're going to live. And, you know, the guy looked it over and he said, oh, that seems like a pretty nice house. Um, yeah, that's okay. But then he looked up on this hill and his mouth just kind of really started to kind of, you know, he went back and it's like, you know, St. Peter, he said, you know, he looked up on the hill and here is this beautiful mansion and it was purple and it was gold and it had these uh, helmets with wings on and there's this big horn that you could blow into and he said, you know, I mean, I'm the ultimate Green Bay Packer fan and, you know, look what you did for that Viking guy. And St. Peter kind of shrugged and looked a little puzzled and said, Viking fan? That's where God lives. <laughs> I'm sorry, Green Bay people, but I can't resist. You know, and, you know, this passage, you know, it, it talks about, you know, places to live, you know, in heaven and stuff. And, you know, this passage says rooms that uh, go to the King James people a lot of times like that better because it talks about, you know, God's going to have a mansion for you. You know, God's going to prepare this mansion for you. But in all reality, when the disciples heard what Jesus was talking about here, they didn't have a clue. I mean, Jesus was saying all this stuff, and they're going like, what? What are you talking about? You know, and, and in their defense, I mean, how could they understand? You know, Jesus hadn't died on the cross yet. He had risen from the dead. He's talking about all the stuff that's going to happen in the future. And, you know, so it's no wonder that they would be scratching their heads and saying, you know, I don't get it. I don't understand what Jesus is talking about here. You know, one day they would, but at the moment, they really didn't have a clue, and you know, this whole passage in a lot of ways, you know, even as we read it, there's just so much mystery here. And there's so much in a lot of ways, you know, in a practical sense that we just don't really have the ability, I think, sometimes to understand. You know, there's just a lot of mystery here. Well, for uh, Melissa, she loved being a second grade teacher and she had this class she taught in the ERC. You know, her kids were wonderful and you know, I mean, they always had you know, all those wonderful questions the kids have, you know, things like, you know, why are butterflies different colors or why are there angels? You know, do angels really exist? And, and you know, and she would, you know, every once in a while allow them to kind of sidetrack her on these kind of things. And, you know, so one day she was talking, well, you know, we'll talk about some different things today. And, and she, so she asked him a question. She said, you know, if, uh, you know, can you tell if a person is good or bad you know, whether or not because they're tall. You know, because you're, you know, you can't tell somebody's good or bad just because they're tall. Or, you know, she said, I've got this friend that, you know, uh, has trouble walking and they spend most of their time getting around in a wheelchair. I mean, can you tell a person's good or bad just because they're in a, in a wheelchair? No, I mean, you can't. And then uh, she started talking about, well, you know, it's true, you know, that people are different. I mean, I'm, you know, certainly the tallest person here, you know, so people are different, you know. So can you think of one way in which uh, I'm different from you? And one of the little second graders said, uh, well, uh, Mrs. Eastman, you're a different color than we are. And, you know, in a group of adults, that probably would get a real awkward silence and people would, you know, probably uh, not feel very comfortable. But uh, Melissa said, oh, okay, um, what color am I? And one of the kids said, well, you're light brown. And another said, no, you're white. And then one of the other kids said, well, I think you're kind of kind of peach colored, and, and then one well, of the other kids said, "No, no, Mrs. Eastman's shiny," and you know she just couldn't help but smile and, and kind of laugh. And she said, "Okay, kids, well, I've got to run down to the the office for a minute, hand in the attendance sheet. So I'll tell you what, I'll I'll see if you can figure it out amongst yourselves what color I am." So uh, she went down, you know, a couple minutes to the, you know, office and things, you know, just came uh, back shortly and the kids were just really, really excited. 
And they said, Mrs. Eastman, we figured it out. We know what color you are. You are clear. C-L-E-A-R. You are clear. And she thought, oh, okay. And so, you know, every once in a while she gets asked the question about, you know, the ethnic background of her classes. And she says, well, all my kids are clear. You know, the wisdom of innocence and, you know, the wonder of, you know, what, you know, as those kids came together, what they were able to understand. You know, the reality is, you know, like I said, you know, so much in this passage is a mystery because Jesus says all this stuff. And one of the things he says is, you know, as my followers, my disciples, you are going to do even greater things than I do. Hmm. Okay, well, let's see. Uh, Jesus, he did things like he turned water into wine. Uh, Jesus did things like he took a little bit of fish and bread and he fed 5,000 people. And when he had a friend get sick and he died, he even raised him from the dead. Uh, I don't think I'm going to see myself doing any of that stuff anytime in the near future, most likely. So how, you know, could what Jesus be saying here, you know, have any real validity? I mean, you know, because I'm not, I don't, I just don't feel, you know, that I'm going to be doing those kinds of things. But I think if you kind of really maybe look at this in the sense, Jesus was only one person. You know, I mean, you know, God can do anything, but at one time, Jesus was only one person. But more often than not, what God does is God works through people. And when you put us all together, I mean, with those little followers he had, he came up with this great idea of doing the church. You know, and it started just with that small little group of people that he had. You know, the reality is, is for our churches and for the future, there's... There's always going to be constant change and things going on. But when we're together, you know, it's kind of one of the things I said yesterday, you know, we're small, but we're mighty. And when you put a group of people and churches together, you know, you think about some of the wonderful things and ministry that God can accomplish and be able to do. And think about some of the things that we can do for the glory of God and for God's kingdom. You know, iron sharpens iron. It was kind of interesting. You know, when we met with the group over at Brownsdale Sergeant the other night to talk about this, they took a big group of sticks. They had, it's like the, the, the chairperson of the SPRC gets up and says, okay, Bridget and John, I want you to take these seven sticks and hold them. <laughs> okay, I'll do it, but, but why? And then I saw what they were talking about, and there were seven sticks, like seven churches. You know, and those seven sticks coming together, it's like, yeah, there's no way I could have broke all those sticks. I could have broke one, but you put all those sticks together, there's no way I could ever break them. You know? You can do even greater things. You know, look at the possibilities. And I don't know where things are going. We'll see. But I think God can do some really great stuff. And I think we can be a part of it. So we'll see. Let's pray. You can do even greater things than I. I don't begin to say I can do any of the things that you do, Jesus. But I know that. With me and the folks here and things, you've done some really great stuff. And I think you can do even great, greater things, more. And that you can work through us to do something really special. So whatever it is that you have for us, whatever you're leading us, just help us to open our hearts and to follow and see where you'll guide us and where you'll take us. To do some of those greater things for your glory as we offer this prayer in your name.
Our hymn is 370, Victory in Jesus. Jesus gathered with his disciples in the upper room. He took bread. He gave thanks. He broke the bread. He said, this is my body, which is given for you. Likewise, on that evening, Jesus took the cup. He said, this is the blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many. For the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Here at the Dexter United Methodist Church, we have an open table, which means any person that would like to have communion is welcome to come and receive the elements. 
Uh, you come forward from your pews. And uh, what we do is, if you just take a piece of the bread off the plate, and then you take one of these cups, you'll notice that each of the front pews, there is a little container there, a little glass bowl, and that's where you put the empty cup. So as the Spirit leads you, if you would like to share in communion, uh, we ask that come forward and help me serve the elements. And you are welcome to come and share in the sacrament of communion with one another. Shared in the bread and the cup together, and in the grace of Christ, we are all truly forgiven. And I ask now that as you're able, you would rise and join with me in the dismissal and blessing. Once we were not a people, once our souls were parched from thirst. Once our hearts were troubled, the sending song is 2162, Grace Alone, and please stick around for coffee and fellowship following if you are able.